consideration of a Chapter 163 development agreement. This is the first reading, and uh, acted upon will be a second reading that we propose in February, February 8th meeting. So the board is being asked to consider a proposed development agreement between the district and the Walt Disney World, Walt Disney Parks and Resorts, U.S. Inc. Uh, Disney. Uh, this is the first of two public hearings required to approve the development agreement. This meeting was properly noticed. The second public hearing is scheduled for February 8th uh, at this location at 9.30. Disney is the owner of a vast majority of the lands within the district and the master developer of the Walt Disney World Resort, a multi-phase project that has and will continue to develop over time. Ma multi-phase master plan, the projects like the villages and like uh, Sunbridge, like Tavistock and, uh, and Osceola County, typically include a development order or agreement to provide certainty regarding future development to the master developer and the local government. Chapter 163 development agreements like the one before you today are a favored tool by Florida's local governments and developers since the sunsetting of the development of regional impact DRI process. In 2022, the district amended its comprehensive plan with state agency review and acceptance. This development agreement naturally follows that amendment to the comprehensive plan. This development agreement provides certainty to both RCID and Disney over the next 30 years by, one, requiring that any future development be consistent with the RCID comprehensive plan and land development regulations and follow the development approval process that states set out in the LDRs. Number two, vested development entitlements in Disney as the owner of the vast majority of the lands within the district and the master developer of the Walt Disney World Resort. Confirming public facilities commitments based on the comprehensive plan five-year capital improvement schedule while leaving future public facility commitments to be determined by the RCID board at that time. Four, requiring Disney to dedicate to RCID any lands necessary for public facility and infrastructure. By maintaining protection of valuable wetlands and conservation lands within the district and addressing utilization of environmental permits with the allocation of the conservation credits. Um, so this development agreement meets all the statutory requirements uh, set forth in Chapter 163 of the Court Statutes. So uh, we'd like you to consider this uh, agreement uh, as in the first reading. Right. And if you have any questions, myself, who drafted the document are here to answer your question. Thank you. <clears throat> Let me make an observation uh, for those who aren't familiar with this concept. This is the way development occurs for larger projects in Florida. As a matter of fact, I, in my own practice, I've got a almost thousand acre uh, project in Lake County. And development, we've been working on a development agreement for well over a year because you've got Lake County involved in that one, city of Mascot, uh, city of Groveland involves uh, setting people's expectations and time limits <coughs> for road development, utility of, of, um, availability, uh, zoning, uh, you know, architectural uh, density, and so forth. So this is the way really development occurs now in the 23rd century. Second century, third century. So, just to let you know, this is this is pretty much a routine item. I would entertain any questions uh, or other comments. Otherwise, I'd entertain a motion uh, for approval at first reading of this development agreement between Walt Disney Parks and Resorts and the district. Thank you. Second. A motion and a second. Comments? Questions? I have one question. Yeah. Pretty simple. So I'm assuming the way this is written, it doesn't change the way we currently do business. It, it does not. It basically memorializes how we've been doing business. Okay, so there's no additional amendments or anything put into it? Everything that's in the agreement, the uh, vested entitlements that we talked about, and the commitment and infrastructure is all based on the comprehensive plan and the main development regulation. So it's putting that into a document between the two entities. Okay, anything else? Does it allow for amendments? Of course, yes. There are some restrictions on amendments in the statute itself. 
but within the purview and within the restrictions that are in Chapter 163, it allows both sides to request and agree on amendments, but there are some statutory limitations and requirements that have to be met. And of course, it does relieve the restrictions that we have to follow with water management districts and the other organizations that we have to deal with. It does not. It still requires necessary permits from South Florida Water Management District, Florida Department of Environmental Protection, uh, it references the conservation credits that were given by those agencies as well as Army Corps of Engineers, all those things that we've been op operating under continue and essentially are, are tied with this agreement as well. Anything else? All right, all in favor of uh, first approval reading of um, the development agreement, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed like sign? Thank you.